Okay, can you guys hear me good? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, um, I'm, I'm from the Rancho Bernardo campus. Maybe you guys were at um, summer camp. Uh, my, I might look familiar to you guys. Um, thank you. Yeah, I was also at the, the Hopeful concert last night. Hunter's one of my absolute best friends. Um, maybe I saw some of you there. But um, yeah, this is, I, I'm going to start here and go, I'm a little over, I used to be really used to 910, and then at RB, we have one service, and there's literally like 17 kids there, and so I have lost my familiarity with this, so if I feel a little antsy, that's why, uh, but I am very excited to be here. I, I love 910. Um, like Austin said, I spent a lot of time here. I started working at 910 when I was, I literally turned 19, um, so I like graduated high school and then like accidentally started working at 910. Um, so this place is near and dear to me. I actually have the old 910 logo tattooed on my wrist. Um, that's, yes, so 910 is literally forever with me. Um, so love and care about this ministry a ton. So thank you guys for letting me be here. I feel beyond honored to um, celebrate Austin and the pastor that he is. A um, little bit about me, because um, I've I'm sure none of you know much about me. Um, one of the, the coolest things that I've loved getting to share is that I am now um, a year married. Um, I, actually, I actually, look at that. I could have picked any photo to show you what my wedding looked like, but I did the one that exposes Austin and Hunter the most as possible. Um, yes. And I also feel like this is a very true picture of Austin and I's friendship. Um, I, I don't really know what happened in this moment. I just felt myself get picked up. Kind of just happens when you're as small as I am. Um, and ended up on Austin's shoulder, and um, it was just a blast. And yet that has honestly been a, a really true, um, I think, just vision of, of who he's been for me. Someone that has, I'm going to cry, dang it, um, just supported me a ton and stepped into my life and a lot of the insecurities that I had and, yeah, just pushed me closer to Jesus. And so, um, yeah, I, I have absolutely adored getting to do life with him, and um, yeah, he, he officiated our wedding. He was like, I would love to. Can I keep my mullet? And Allie and I were like, yeah, for sure, um, and so we have, we have just been so blessed by the Paines and their family, and so this is, uh, yeah, a, a tough one for us, but we're also very, very excited for them, so Austin, thank you for all the life that you've done with us, um, and we're going we're gonna to get there. We're going we're gonna to be up north. We're going to come hang out with you guys. Also, who's going to watch Bandit now? I know. Um, I spent many a, many a day watching Bandit. Um, speaking of, though, we got our own dog recently. This is, um, this is Scoot. That's my guy. I freaking love Scoot so much. Um, yeah, Scooter. We call him Scoot for short, though. Uh, he's a little Bernie doodle, and I've never had a puppy and did not know what I was walking into. Um, so my life has been dominated by, like, celebrating him when he doesn't pee in the house. Um, and so I never thought I would say good potty as much as I have been, uh, but I, I have been, and um, it's concerning. But um, love, love the guy. He's the best. Uh, he's, been, he's been a huge joy to me and Allie as well. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Like I said, I'm from the Rancho Bernardo campus. I, I run a ministry called Community Youth. We call it CY for short. Um, and it's been a blast, guys. Like, we, we love what God is doing over there. Um, and it's a trip. It's a trip. We, uh, it was funny coming here. Like, we don't even have a building. We don't have a church yet. Um, so our students literally set up their room, and they build it, and, like, they put all the, like, we have to set up all these pipe and drapes things, and so it's been really cool to watch um, this group of students just hunger for Jesus in a way that they're getting to church literally at 7.30 in the morning to, like, build their church, and so it's been really cool, um, and it's been a very special season. Um, I want to share a little bit about me. I know that um, Austin kind of mentioned I've, I didn't grow up in church, um, so I did not start following Jesus until I was a senior in high school, and my journey um, to that point was far from normal. I think it actually took people stepping into my life to be like, you had a weird childhood um, for me to realize that. But um, I grew up with two parents that are very unique in their own existence. Uh, but my dad, um, kind of a roller coaster of a human being, but um, one of the things about our kind of religious upbringing is that um, my dad called himself a agnostic atheist Buddhist, which in probably five or six different ways, all of those cancel each other out. Um, so I was very confused about religion. Um, and then we also grew up across the street from one of the biggest churches in America. And I remember in fourth grade, I asked my dad why we don't go to church. And he was like, oh, they just take your money. And I was like, cool, all right. Um, so I grew up with a very like 
whatever idea of religion, it didn't feel important to me, it didn't feel um, super real or necessary in my life, um, and even the idea of Christianity just felt like, nah, I'm good. Um, so a lot of my life was just kind of doing my own thing, but at the same time, my mom, um, when I turned one, she lost her ability to walk and use her arms, and so predominantly most of my life was spent taking care of my mom, and so with that, came uh, an upbringing of people telling me I was a really good person. And so um, I would take care of my mom, I'd like help her eat her food, and there were things like that that existed in my world. And so kind of the public opinion of me was that I was good, but at the same time, in my own coping of kind of the chaos of my family and what took place in my upbringing, I pursued my discomforts and my anger and my own coping through pretty selfish methods. I grew up with um, a pretty strong habit of running to pornography to cope with that. Um, and so I lived in this world where religion and God didn't feel important. People told me I was good, but in my own processing of life, I felt bad. And I felt like this confusion and guilt of why people thought I was good, but internally I felt like I was bad. And so around my junior year, I really think God started to reveal himself to me um, in that. And I'm thankful for those places of even guilt and um, my own wandering is because I believe that's where God met me. Um, I was an only child, and so I would just kind of hang out in my room and think about life. Don't worry, only children, we're going to make it. It's gonna be, let, me, let me be proof that we'll survive as a, as a race. But um, yeah, I would just kind of like kick it in my room. And in that place, I started to really ponder the idea of God. And conveniently enough, I was on YouTube and I accidentally clicked on a Christian rap video, um, which weird way to start, but that's where it began for me. Um, and I listened to this guy talk about grace and freedom in a rap song and was compelled by the love of Jesus to um, ask a couple friends that I knew went to church, hey, can I, can I go to church with you? And so I spent my summer year um, heading into my senior year, um, and then all of my senior year just falling in love with Jesus. And um, so I spent uh, the last year of high school learning all about who God is and his love for us, and I experienced immense pushback from my family, um, which led me to kind of pursue a lot of doubt. And so the last 10 to 11 years have been an absolute joy of getting to know Jesus. And I want to say that as someone that didn't start there. Um, I know that predominantly a lot of us in this room, maybe you've grown up in church. Maybe this has just kind of been the habit of your family. Um, maybe I can step in as someone who, who's never had that and gone, man, what a joy it is to know Jesus. Um, I look at who I was outside of church and outside of this relationship with God, and I go, never again. I don't want to go back there. Um, so maybe that's a refreshment for you. Man, what a joy it is to know Jesus. Um, this is important, though, because as much as getting to follow Jesus has been an absolute blessing and joy, um, my life probably got more complicated and difficult as I began following Jesus. Um, and I think that there was a grace gift of God in that going, like, I'm going to wait until you know me so that you can get through some of these difficulties. And so though right, I have like loved getting to know the grace and life with God, um, my whole entire kind of like 10 years has been a roller coaster um, of, I've like watched my mom get multiple different cancers. Um, my dad um, has just kind of gone off the rails. And um, yeah, there, there have been an immense amount of difficulties along my journey of getting to follow Jesus. There have been doubts and angers and disappointments. And so I say all of this because I think it's really important to know that this, I, I believe, is why prayer is so important. And so we're talking today in Church 101, just kind of looking at those basic principles of Christianity. And, and prayer is one of those things that, um, I've had a couple people ask me this week, like, oh yeah, what are you teaching? And I was like, oh, I'm talking about prayer. And they're just like, oh, just the lofty topic of prayer. And prayer can be that. Don't get me wrong. Like there is a world of prayer to be explored. But in Church 101, I'm excited to let you know that I think prayer can also be really simple. Um, and I think actually in my only child-ism, I, I didn't have a family that we would pray together. And so my year of getting to know Jesus kind of cultivated a lot of private prayer. And it was a lot of me just kind of fumbling through, I guess I'm supposed to talk to God. Um, this feels like one of those topics that um, I've, when I've taken like spiritual 
uh, gift test, I've always had prayer show up in my top five, and yet I've always been confused why. Because it never felt like this thing that just went, right, like prayer, I'm really good at that. Um, I think a lot of my journey just started in going, God, I don't really understand prayer. And yet, um, if you will, open up to John 15. I'd love to show you why I believe prayer to be such an important part of our relationship with God. John 15, it's going to be the last gospel, um, the fourth book in your New Testament. Then you're going to look for that big number 15. We're just going to read um, verse 1 all the way down to 17. It says this, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like the branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that your joy, or so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, and if you do what I command, oh, guys, you ever just lose your place? Just happened. I'm back. I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And what we see here, this is like, right, John 15 is like, I think, North Coast's favorite verse. We had like shirts that just said remain 11 times on it. Um, but I think one of the things that, that really stood out to me and kind of praying about this and, and seeking God, where do, where do you want to go with this, is that there is a character of God that is incredibly relational. We see that God loves us. He puts him in a place to not just exist around us or to be a distant idea that we think about, but that he reveals himself as one that loves us. And this is a deeply relational action. God is moving forward in love. And then he also identifies himself as a friend. God, God doesn't just call himself a Uh, a king or a lord or, um, right, just the title God, but he shows himself in a relational form that is friend. And so if this is true, that God is relational, that he loves us, that he is inviting us to know friendship with him, then we also see what our daily goal is. It's to remain. It's to remain a friend to him. It's to remain relational with him. Um, Hunter is my best friend. Hunter is my best man at my wedding. Um, Hunter is also probably easier to talk about at this moment because if I talk about Austin anymore, I'm going to cry. Um, so um, could you imagine with me for a moment, um, maybe think of your best friend, maybe think of that person that you've done the most life with, if our friendship was just established on 10 minutes in the morning, I talk to Hunter, I go, I call him up, or I sit down with him, I get coffee, and I just, I, for 10 minutes, I just tell him everything I want. Hunter, I want this, I want this, can you do this for me? Um, Hunter, would you make sure that this happens? And then I went, cool, have a great day. Though, this is an okay thing to do, and right, we are given permission to sit before God and ask him things, Imagine a friendship that is built on just that, just a list of requests every now and then or daily. What a, what a complicated friendship that would be. And yet what we see is that there is this invitation from God to explore friendship. 
And I believe prayer is the lifeline of our friendship with God. Um, I have been incredibly challenged by um, this guy. His name is Brother Lawrence. Um, and he, he didn't write, he even write this book. We just kind of found his journal, and it became a book. And it's just kind of him processing and writing about his prayer life. Um, and I love this quote from Brother Lawrence that I think simplifies what it means to walk in a life that is conversational and friendly with God. He says this, he says, he does not ask much of us, merely a thought of him from time to time, a little act of adoration, sometimes to ask for his grace, sometimes to offer him your sufferings, at other times to thank him for the graces past and present he has bestowed upon you. In the midst of your troubles, to take solace in him as often as you can. Lift up your heart to him during your meals and in company. The least little remembrance will always be the most pleasing to him. One deed not cry out very loudly. He is nearer to us than we think. And so prayer can feel really complicated. It can feel like this. So I'm talking to this guy. Is he even there? God, he's not right before me. But prayer, I think, is most found in just little remembrance. I, said, I, I wrote down, it's on, honest invitations into your life. And it's daily. It's hourly. It's minutely. Secondly. Right? It's, it's just as we come to remembrance that God loves us, he is pursuing relationship with us, it's us choosing to respond by honestly bringing him into where we're at. Prayer is an honest invitation into your life. Here's the thing. You're like, how honest? God already knows you better than you know yourself. He's all present, he's all powerful, and he's all knowing. And he still loves you. And so he just goes, be honest with me. I want to do life with you. I want to get into the messy parts of it. I want to be involved in all aspects of your life. And so today, I don't want to like blow your mind with anything. I, I really don't want to make prayer like too complicated, but I have four permissions for you. Four prayer permissions that I believe God throughout scripture invites us to talk to him in all kinds of ways, to share all types of seasons of life with God. And so the first one today is that God is inviting us to be confused and even doubtful with him. God is inviting us to be confused and even doubtful in our prayers. Um, Psalm 77, verse 7 to 9. David is having a tough day, right? It's just, it is a prayer of David just letting it out to God. And in the midst of this, David just starts spouting off some of his greatest doubts about God. He says, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor to me again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed at all times? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Have you ever doubted something about God? Or have you ever found yourself in a place where you've gone, I don't even know if God's good right now. It's okay to talk about that with God. This is where I started. I came in going, you're expecting me to believe that this God is good when my whole life has been watching my mom not be able to walk. I had to work through that. I had to figure out, God, are you good if my mom suffers? And that was something that I had to explore in conversation with God. You know what's so cool about God, though? He's really ready to answer those doubts. He is the most qualified to answer them. And so it's okay to come to God at times and go, Lord, I don't understand you. I don't even know if you exist. I'm taking an inkling of faith to even have this conversation because other people have done that in the past. And so in your prayer life, maybe you're like, I don't even know if you're listening, God. Amazing place to start. This is a permission that you have been given in prayer to just start with your doubts. He's more than capable of answering them. Number four, whoa, number two. In prayer, you have been given permission to be bummed. Bummed. Again, Psalm 77, David having a rough day. 
uh, verses one and two, he says this, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. And at night, I stretched out untiring hands. And I would not be comforted. You ever just had a rough day? Have you ever just gone through a rough season? It's okay to talk to God about that. It's okay to sit before God and go, this sucks, right? Even if it's just like a bad day, right? I, in training a puppy, I have had some days where I'm just like, ugh, God, I am like so frustrated and annoyed and I just like, I'm like not getting anything done. This has been, I also like, Hunter literally texts me when it's cloudy. Like when it gets cloudy, he just knows I'm sad. Um, And I'll just have days where I'm like, God, I'm just like, we're just having a bad day. That's all right. But you know what? He's even qualified. um, If I can just like continue on a train of honesty here, I've kind of like set off the motion, so I'm just gonna keep going. Um, Like almost a year ago, one of my all-time best friends passed away. And those have been some of like the hardest prayers. Just like, go God, what? This is tough. And that's okay. You're allowed to have a bad day. You're allowed to come to God and go, I don't have it all together. I just want to cry. And that's all right. God invites you to talk to him in that way. He delights to sit with you in those times. Number three, you have been given permission to be angry. This is great. I feel like we all get to high school and we just bottle up our angst and anger and we just go and watch Riverdale to like experience anger or something. I don't know, right? It's complicated in high school. Um, and yet, it's actually okay to be angry. We are allowed to run to God with our frustrations and our angers. In fact, I believe it's in line with God's character to come to him and go, Lord, I'm mad about this. Psalm 139, one of the most beautiful exposés of God creating us and knowing us. And then at the end, it just gets like weirdly dark. He just turns and he goes, if only you, God, would slay the wicked. Whoa, Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. And God goes, prayer, write it, follow in suit. There are times when it is okay to just go, God, what the heck? This is infuriating. Guys, I, this, is, this is a safe place. Um, I had a parent the other day email me one of the most like condescending things ever, and I just sat there and I went, God, I'm like mad about this. And that was okay, right? It's okay to go to God and be like, this upset me. This makes me feel angry. I don't enjoy how this went about, right? From the little personal things to global injustice, Right When we see the hurt and suffering and sin of the world around us and we go, God, do something about this. Fix it. It is okay for us to stand before God and go, I don't like this. The last one before I wrap up here. God has given us permission to be stoked in prayer. I want you to write down stoked. Psalm 92, he says, It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. I think that this might be one of the hardest ones to do. Because when things feel like they're going well, or when prayers are answered, it can be really hard to lose our need and want for God. And so we miss the opportunity to celebrate, to share and delight. Guys, this is one of my all-time favorite things about Hunter. Um, He is the best celebrator of 
things that are just going on. I just love it, right? Hunter is just like stoked all the time. He is, right, just ready to celebrate people and the things that God is doing in their worlds. And we as believers, as people that are friends with God, let's be the most ready to celebrate when things are going good. It's also okay to have things that are going good. I think sometimes we get in life group, we're like, all right, like what's God doing in your world? And we kind of like fiddle our thumbs because we don't have like a, a like flight the next day that we need prayed for or like a test that's coming up and like things are just actually going good. It's okay for us to go, man, God's just doing awesome things in my life right now. And so in prayer, there is a place to just celebrate things with God, to just come to him and go, God, little win, great burrito today. Really enjoyed it. I was, a, I was surprised that there were beans in it. I love that. Not normal, but Lord, thank you. I don't deserve that, but you bestowed that upon me today, and it brought great joy to me. And so we can celebrate that burrito. We can. And I think it's important that we do, right? The second you start forgetting to celebrate little things, ooh, don't get there. That's when we start, stop celebrating the big things. And so would you find moments to remember that God is there to enjoy that with you, right? Uh, in this last year, I've had a lot of good burritos and times celebrating God with them. Um, but one of, the, one of the other coolest things that I've gotten to celebrate is that my mom came to know Jesus. Um, and so, yeah, woo, yes, let's celebrate it. We can be stoked together. Um, it's been so cool. I've been praying for this for 11 years and I'm getting choked up about it because it was really cool. Um, Guys, that was one of the coolest celebrations with God ever. Just go, how cool. God, you did it. You saved my mom. And so, ah, 910 brings it out of me. And like, who is this guy again? Uh, he just <laughs> cried the whole time. Uh, it's all right. I'm allowed to. Um, whether you, I'm not going to see most of you ever again. Alexa, it's a summer camp. Um, so, safe space, right? What does Damien do? That? Did I do it right, Paige? Um, and so, right, we must make sure that we create space in our relationship with God to celebrate things. God has commanded joy. He has invited us to celebrate and do life with him. And so would you make sure that in your time of prayer, there's also time to explore the good things of life and what he is doing and to celebrate those things. And, and this is where I'm going to land the plane here. I say all of this because when we learn to sit and share with God, it's where we become shaped. And so when we bring our doubts, when we bring our anger, when we bring our, um, our just like distress, and when we bring our joy, it is the perfect creator of the universe that's standing beside us in it. And it is in that place that we become shaped by him, that we become more like him, when we come to him and go, God, I doubt just really big things right now. It is him that refines those doubts, that, that cleans up the areas of our unbelief and brings us to deeper places of faith with him. When we come to God and we are misled in our anger, or maybe we're properly led in our anger, it is the reminder that God is there taking care of it, that he has promised his justice over us. When we come to God and we are just bummed, it is the comfort of God that meets us in that place. And when we come to him stoked, guys, he's already stoked. He's so excited. And right, it is a place that creates worshipers of all of us. And so um, maybe really simplistic message, four permissions for you to develop a prayer life with God, to develop conversations with the greatest friend ever. And my challenge to you would just be like, start that. You got, we're, right? I'm going to pray, and you just talk to God too, right? This is so easy. We just get to continue in conversation and friendship with God out of this place. So thank you for having me. I've, I've appreciated being here so much. Let me go ahead and pray for you guys. Lord, thank you so much for your grace, God, that you have revealed yourself to us, that you love us so much, Lord. And God, we do not deserve that love, 
at all. And yet our lives are marked by your son and by the gospel, God. And so um, we see the gift and blessing of friendship that you are inviting us to um, partake in. And Lord, we're going to run to it, Lord. We're going to trust that you are present, that you are here, and we're going to bring our just honest selves to you as life happens around us, God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray this all in your name. Amen.